COVID-19 or other respiratory infectious diseases, this is a new fact of life. And we're going to have to have tools out there that allow us to stay ahead of the curve as these things outbreak, presumably on a more, uh, you know, a more reoccurring basis. So what we do at Dragonfly is we build specialized drones for uh, governments and for industry and for healthcare and public safety. And we have a sensor package that we've been testing for some time now that uses a, a number of sensors and AI to look at things like body temperature, uh, stress facial lines, uh, weepy eyes. We can even uh, do things like heart rates and blood pressure. Uh, it's a combination of all of these things that allow authorities or people that are trying to understand the spread or the health matter that's uh, at hand exactly what they can do, what the size of the problem is, and even uh, find specific individuals at a distance. Some people have said to us, hey, do we want drones flying around collecting this information? Well, the reality is that's a lot more or a lot less intrusive than having people stand at a long line and having a sensor probe put on your forehead. So this, this is the new reality and, and, uh, and this, is, this is one of the ways that it's, it's going to help be contained. Is any technology being used right now in diagnosing or treating patients with COVID-19? I know your company has been around, so how timely is uh, all of this happening with, um, or is there anything in development right now that's being rushed into production or to market to kind of help in this outbreak? I would, I would uh, characterize it where the customer inquiries that we have had have, uh, have spiked around this particular issue. And while we've had sensor packages that can do health monitoring at a distance for a while, being able to put those in a specific array that can then help identify maybe specific respiratory conditions, uh, that certainly the market demand is up on that. Whether they get to market in time uh, really depends on how far this particular outbreak goes. Uh, but certainly as we see, uh, we, what we do see now for sure is that health agencies around the world are very interested in this technology and, and it will likely be deployed in this particular uh, scenario, but certainly as a preventative measure and as a reactive measure in future events, this, this technology will be live. And Cameron, some cities, some countries are more medically and technologically advanced than others. This is spreading around the world. Um, how do you make the best and the latest available to everyone regardless of cost and how prohibitive is it for some, some places? Well, su surprisingly, the, the costs aren't uh, overly prohibitive, especially if you consider the economic cost that something like this uh, is causing. So, uh, you know, anytime you can put something like this into work and it can have any sort of measurable effect uh, to reduce the spread or to protect human life, uh, the costs are, are really, really insignificant. Uh, in terms of uh, deployment to the rest of the world, uh, a lot of the technology that we're using hasn't been deployed in this specific way before, but it has been de deployed in other use cases. So we can get it to market quite quickly, uh, and we don't see a huge